In this lesson we'll be creating this beautiful black cockatoo with graphic fine liners and we'll be using the cross hatching technique. So let's get into it. You don't need a lot of materials for this project. Just an A3 sketch pad, some graphic fine liners and a 6B and 2H pencil. Cross hatching is a very old technique that uses intersecting lines to create shadow. Before we start on our cockatoo, let's have a quick run through the technique. This project requires five varying weights of tone. The lightest tone is laid in with 45 degree lines. The second tone can be laid in with vertical lines over the previous lines. Next, lay 45 degree lines in the other direction over the previous lines to create that third tone, followed by horizontal lines for the fourth tone. The fifth and darkest tone can be created by laying in 60 degree lines over the top. And that's it. You can find this image on our website. To transfer it, we shade the backside with a 6B pencil, flip it over, tape it onto a sheet of paper and transfer the outline with a sharp 2H pencil. Incidentally, this is printed out at A3 sizing, but would work in A4 sizing also. Remove the image and we can lay some ink. The best way is to start from the head and move down the page. This way you can minimise how much you rest your hand on the fresh ink. The rule of thumb is to lay in the outline first and then fill in the area. I used the 0.5 pen for most of the outlines and the finer 0.1 and 0.05 pens for the hatching. With a work like this, every detail really needs to be put in. There is, of course, many ways to depict plumage on a bird. In a painting, sometimes just suggesting the feathers by blocking in the mass is enough. This, however, is more illustrative in nature and almost every feather is depicted. The cockatoo we are portraying is also fluffed up. They do this when they are relaxed. It also allows for more shadows to show the feathers are raised. It can help to think of the feather placement a bit like fish scales. Each feather has a central part running down the middle called a shaft or rachis, and veins emitting from this at an angle. So draw in the shape of the feather first, then lightly draw in the rachis and draw in the veins, keeping the angle of the lines in mind add more shadow at the base of each feather. It is also important to follow the form with the pen strokes to reinforce the direction of the feathers. Because of the way one uses pens to create consistent strokes, sometimes it is necessary to shift the page so that it is easier to create neat pen strokes comfortably. Under the eye here, on the cheeks, you can see the shape of the feather changes to smaller squarish feathers. These, however, can be handled a similar way, just keep them light on the edges and darken them at the base under the feather above. When laying in the feathers on the back, behind the wings, we can lay the feather shapes in with a dark line and then establish the surrounding shadow with a thick 0.1 fine liner. These feathers are almost vertical to the viewer and there is a lot of shadow around them. These feathers are called the scapulars. Once all of the dark areas are in, we can hatch the feathers to darken them and leave certain areas lighter. And then just keep moving across the wing these feathers revert back to the fish scale pattern, but in the opposite direction to the ones on the face. It is also just as important to create interest with your patterning. Keep the lines uniform to each other, but not necessarily to the adjoining feather. The feathers after the scapulars near the body are called the down feathers, 
As we move down the wing, the larger feathers are called the greater covert feathers. The cockatoo we are depicting in this project is a red-tailed black cockatoo. Red tails can grow to 60 centimetres and inhabit a broad range across a... Three, two, one. The cockatoo we are depicting in this project is a red-tailed black cockatoo. Red tails can grow to 60 centimetres and inhabit a broad range across Australia. They eat seeds and lay their eggs in the cavity of a tree. There is five sub... Three, two, one. Five subspecies are recognised, differing chiefly in beak size. The common indigenous name for the red tail is Minha. Cross-hatching has been used by artists, draftsmen and engravers for centuries. Records of portraits as early as 1302 used the technique and by 1440 the technique had spread across to the region of Florence, then considered the art hub of the world. Perhaps the most famous practitioner of this technique was Leonardo da Vinci. Like many other Florence artists, he used the technique extensively through his work. The technique was further refined by Rembrandt, who was able to suggest incredible variations in light and shadow. The feathers of the breast can be suggested with short vertical strokes. These feathers are very fine and sometimes referred to as pin feathers. We can keep working across the covert wing feathers and then we can start with the mirror flight feathers. Lay these in first with long strokes using the 0.5 fine liner. Again laying the shadows in first. Once all the shadow is in, we lay in the long vertical strokes to suggest the direction of each feather. The greater covert feathers are risen off the long mirror feathers, so some shadow can be laid in there to suggest this. To darken the feathers, I use long horizontal hatching lines. The next set of flight feathers below are called the secondary feathers. These can be handled the same way, but they are quite a few tones darker. For areas where I apply lots of tone, it is best to use a very fine nib, in this case the 0.1. I find the tone is much softer. The largest set of flight feathers are the primary feathers. These feathers have a very pronounced rachis running down each feather. This will be much lighter, so it is necessary to establish this first by drawing in the outline of each one and then shading around it. These are low on the bird and in deep shadow. The primaries at the rear are the darkest tone and are almost full black with only tiny patches of white through the hatching visible.
The tail feathers can be rendered next. These feathers are the only bit of colour on the bird, but they are bright red. Of course we can't show this colour in this monochromatic project, but if we leave the paper bereft of tone between the bars, it suggests to the viewer that there is a bright and vibrant area there. After the tail feathers, we lay in our friend's feet and render the branch. The thing to bear in mind here is to follow the round form of it. Directional shading reinforces shape. It's good to take your time with this because a few strokes in the wrong direction can ruin the effect. For watching, we hope you're inspired to try out cross hatching with fine liners. It's a really relaxing art technique, and black cockatoos are gorgeous. Stay tuned, and we'll see you next time.